Yes, I can hear you. So, a very warm welcome to Reverend Father Dominic, the PBC Chairperson, Mr. Stephen Jin, and all of you who are present this evening. Thank you for taking the time to come to be able to share with us this evening. Useful for all of us, and we will we will have a good evening together. If you remember, when St. Joseph was told in a dream to accept Mary as his spouse, can you imagine his state of mind? I don't know what his state of mind was. Was he anxious? Was he disturbed? Was he frightened? Was he lost? What was his state of mind? So perhaps to help us to get into his shoes, may I invite all of you to listen to the first song that we have for this session. Can we have the first song, please?
So, as you have heard that one beautiful song, you would have noticed what were some of St. Joseph's perhaps feelings. There was fear, hunger, courage. He was asking for strength, compassion. He was asking the Lord, let me have your heart. He was asking for hope. This is what we all need today, hope. But with that hope, this most important thing we need is faith. But then when you think about it, why, St. Joseph, why did the Pope run this year from 8 December 2020 to 8 December 2021? Why did he dedicate it to St. Joseph all of a sudden? In reality, it was not all of a sudden. Let me just bring you to that. In the sixth century, there was a saint, St. John of the Cross. He was a Spanish, Spanish saint, the greatest poet of the love of God. He was unfortunate. His father died young. His mother, in extreme poverty, had to bring him up and later sent him to an orphanage where he grew, to, grew up. He was declared a doctor of the church. He had a close friend, St. Teresa of Avila, also a Spanish saint from a wealthy family. Her parents were Don Alfonso Sanchez and Donna Beatrix. And again, to cut the story short, in 1970, St. Teresa was made a doctor of the church by Pope Paul VI. Somehow both of them, St. John of the Cross and Teresa of Avila acknowledged that they did not know St. Joseph. And they made a firm resolution to get to know and to love him better. So these were these two saints who made this resolution. We must know this saint. Who is this Saint Joseph? We must get to know him better, to love him better. Now the question I voice, voice to you is, what about us? Do we know Saint Joseph? Well, I hope the sharing today will unveil to you the wonders of Saint Joseph for you. I believe that in our day, the Lord wants to direct our hearts, our families, our parishes, our dioceses, and the church to St. Joseph in a major way. The action of the Holy Spirit in the life of the church has been gaining momentum for a long time. And let me show you how God has been leading the church to this moment. In the 18th century, in the year 1868, there was a blessed Jean John Joseph Latasse. He writes a letter to blessed Pope Pius IX. And in his letter, his request was, to declare St. Joseph the patron of the Universal Church. Imagine, this was in 1868. Now, two years later, in 1870, Blessed Pope Pius IX declared St. Joseph the patron of the Universal Church. Okay. Now, and in 1873, the founding of the Congregation of St. Joseph, as we know, there are different congregations. There is the Redemptorist, there is the FMM Sisters, there is the Capuchins, different congregations. But the Congregation of St. Joseph was founded by St. Leonard 
Muraldo in 1873. In 1879, in a town in Ireland, the town's name was called Knock. Apparently, St. Joseph appears with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. John the Apostle, and Jesus appearing as the Lamb of God. Now, this was in a place in Knock in Ireland. I was lucky many years ago. I dedicated to St. Joseph in Rome. It is completed and consecrated as a basilica in 1912. St. Lugi Guanella. Now also, there is the, the so-called the largest church dedicated to St. Joseph in Montreal, Canada. It's called the Oratory of St. Joseph. And that's the biggest church, apparently, that's dedicated to St. Joseph today. Now, we all know of litanies. You know, at the ordination, we pray the litany. And then for the Feast of Lady of Fatima, we have the litany of Our Lady of Fatima. We have the litany of the Blessed Virgin Mary. I wonder if you heard of the litany of St. Joseph. In 1909, St. Pope Pius X, he officially approves the litany of St. Joseph in 1909. So this was another thing the church has slowly been bringing St. Joseph from the 1800s to the forefront, very slowly. And in 1917, in 1917, at the apparitions at Fatima in Portugal. Apparently during the last apparition on October the 13th, St. Joseph happens to be appearing, holding the child Jesus and blessing the world. That was in 1917, in the last century. Now in 1955, Venerable Pope Pius XII establishes the Feast of St. Joseph the Worker to be celebrated on May the 1st. Now, we wonder, been wondering why May the 1st? You see, at that time, during that time, the workers were being treated very badly. So to bring out the dignity of work, to bring out the dignity of the types of work that we do, to bring out the dignity of workers, to bring out us to be sincere and honest in the kind of work that we do. We had the Pope establishes the Feast of St. Joseph the Worker on May the 1st. So that is one of the reasons we have this, this feast celebrated in the Catholic Church. Now in 1962, Pope John, St. Pope John the 23rd insert St. Joseph's name into the canon of the Mass. That was in Eucharistic Prayer 1. And it's in 1962. Pope John the 23rd. And in 2013, Pope Francis, echoing and fulfilling the intentions of Pope Emeritus Benedict the 16th, he inserts the name of St. Joseph into all the Eucharistic prayers. And he also in 2013, he consecrates the Vatican city state to St. Joseph. So today, from 2013, the, the city of the Vatican state has been consecrated to St. Joseph. Am I being heard clearly? Sorry? Hello? Hey, brother. Okay, okay, brother. Can hear me? Okay, ben, thanks. Ben. Okay, now the thing is this. Really, 
Many people are not aware of this remarkable events. In fact, there's many more, there's many more events. I've only chosen a few to bring out the importance of St. Joseph. The church has done more to promote St. Joseph in the last 150 years than in the previous 1800 years of Christianity. That you must notice. You must be wondering why St. Joseph was not there all the time. But why St. Joseph now? That is the question perhaps might be in many of your, your minds. But I believe that there are two important reasons. First, I feel we need the spiritual fatherhood of St. Joseph to help us protect marriage and the family. Because when you think about it, marriage and the family have been under attack. In modern times today, the threats, these threats have reached extraordinary heights. It's so beautiful when a couple is getting married. If you look at it, they hold hands. They don't want to let each other go. Beautiful, wonderfully dressed. Their smiles, they're all loving. If you think about your, the time when y'all were married, you couples, wonderful time of your life. Beautiful time. And then as years go by, your family comes along. You look at the picture on the right, the family of six, four children, and the father and mother walking into the sunset. Lovely. But what has been happening now? Threats to the family and marriage have reached extraordinary heights. Because many people no longer know what it means to be a man or a woman. In some countries, men want to dress like women. Women like to dress like men. The way they dress is about the same, differently as men and women. The hairstyles change. Even to today, men, you have got makeup for men. Let you learn what constitutes marriage and a family. Many countries even claim to have defined redefine marriage and the family. Men, some countries say men and men can get married and that's marriage. Yet in others, a woman and woman can get married and that's, that's marriage. And in some cultures, sad to say, a man marries a female animal. Now, you see what is happening to marriage. It has been really brought to a very, very terrible state. I remember St. Pope John Paul II saying many years ago, this would be the end of civilization. Because in marriage, there has to be procreation. If there's no procreation in time to come, there will be a dead. There will be death to civilization. It is, it, is, it is frightening, really. It is frightening. So, it is, there's great confusion on these matters, greater confusion than in any previous era of human history. If you remember at Fatima, the servant of God, Saint Lucia dos Santos, among the, she was one of the three children who Our Lady appeared to. Saint Lucia dos Santos was the longest visionary of the Fatima apparitions. She knew about the seriousness of the times and she made a very serious statement about this issue. I quote, she has said, the final battle between the Lord and the kingdom of Satan will be about marriage and the family. So to combat and overcome Satan's deception, we the church need Saint Joseph. His example and protection are the only way out of the great mess that we are in. Who else can we turn to help us to understand the sanctity of marriage and the family? And all about, if not about the head of the family, St. Joseph, who's also known as the terror of demons. So I've told you something about what marriage really is about, how it is being 
attacked. Today, people spend so much of time for a big banquet. They look into the menu, they look into the dressing, they look into so many things about the long list of people to come for the wedding. But how serious are they about preparing for the sacrament of marriage in a family? Is there time for God? Or has the television taken that time? Communication is so limited. So as you can see today, what is there a lack in the world today? There's a tremendous lack of love. There's a tremendous lack of love in this world today. Because if only through faith, we can grow in love. The sacrament of marriage and the family will be different. Today, St. Joseph, if you think about it, he needs the world to be, we need the world to be re-evangelized, including the vast majority of baptized Christians. That's us. St. Joseph was apparently the first missionary today. He decides again to bring Jesus to the nations. Now, many nations and cultures that were previously Christian have fallen away from the Christian roots and are on a path of self-destruction. Brothers and sisters, without a major about turn, turn around, civilization is going to self-destruction. You look at it, it's already happening. We are destructing the world pollution, the water is being polluted, the air is being polluted, people are being polluted, the media is being polluted. What else? What is driving the world today when you think about it? What is driving the world is consumerism. Satan wants things to be divided. He wants a family to be divided. If there is a television in one family, after a divorce, they need two televisions. You need two of everything. So we have to be really careful. In an apostolic exhortation on St. Joseph in 1989, St. Pope John Paul II reminded us of invoking St. Joseph on the work of re-evangelizing the world, brothers and sisters in Christ. We need, first of all, to re-evangelize ourselves. We need to re-evangelize our families, our communities, our BECs, our ministries. We have to re-evangelize the world. But before that, we need to re-evangelize ourselves. And that is our faith. Do you notice whenever Jesus cured somebody, he always said, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. So brothers and sisters in Christ, we know, I don't have to tell you how much we are damaged by what is happening in the secular world. We are being troubled. If we don't, Keep Satan away if we don't protect ourselves by prayer. We don't protect ourselves by being alert. We don't protect ourselves by bringing St. Joseph in to help us. We, the society, would be going into self-destruction. And it's already happening. It's already happening. And that is why, as I've already said, we need to make a major turnaround. So perhaps at this juncture, we've gone to about 20 minutes of the talk. Perhaps maybe we got to look at some of the struggles that we have. As a priest myself, I find when my work is concerned, let me share and then I hope 
some of you will also be able to let us know what are some of your struggles so that we can hear and don't worry because when you share, you're not the only one who'll be having these problems. Many of us are on the same platforms, many of us. So let me feel, let me tell you what is happening to me. And this time I feel left out. I'm alone. The times I'm frightened when I see people falling away. And sometimes I feel my faith is dwindling. At work, date lines is difficult to keep. There's lack of co coordination with different people. Difficult to handle meetings. Redundant fears. I'm so far from my family. I'm on this corner of the peninsula. I can't see that. I can't meet my parishioners because some of them are so frightened because of the MCO or the sick father. Please don't come because we are aged, we are frightened. The language varies. I can go on and on. So these are some of my fears. Perhaps maybe I would like to invite you to share so that we can help the others who are also maybe suffering in silence to be able to know that they are not alone. Please share with us, please share. Let us take some time to, to share. And don't be afraid because when you share, you're releasing your fears as well. Anyone, anyone. You can share your struggles, yes. Your current struggles, your family life, your relationships, your career, your jobs. Anybody? Yes, Father, thank you, Father. Father Francis, you are, thanks for the sharing. And then we'll continue to listen more on, uh, from you. Uh, just want to acknowledge uh, the presence of a number of parishioners from St. Thomas More who are with us, uh, they are actually, and also with a few nuns, you know, uh, I think Dr. St. Paul's, uh, basically they are going through 33 days journey uh, of consecration to St. Joseph, St. Joseph. Okay, so uh, we thank them for joining, uh, we'd like to thank them uh, for joining us in this particular talk. Uh, at the same time, uh, my dear brothers and sisters, uh, if you have any question or rather your own particular sharing on this matter, your own struggle, you would like to share. Uh, no need to switch on your camera. Nobody going to see you. Uh, we can't see you also. So you just may share. Just introduce. Maybe you don't need to introduce your name also. It, it's a personal thing if you want to share. Okay. Father Francis, would you like to continue? I think there's no sharing okay. at the moment. Okay, we'll have it maybe at a later time. Huh? Hopefully, yeah. I hope, because I also like to hear your sharings to know how we are all affected across the board. Now, if you notice, uh, Father Dominic has mentioned about the nuns, daughters of St. Paul, who are taking the 33 days of consecration. Perhaps maybe also, it is time for us to think about consecrating ourselves to St. Joseph. God is telling his church that in order to defend marriage and the family, to elevate morals, to recover lost ground, to win souls for Jesus, we need to bring St. Joseph into the battlefield. Because he's also known as the terror of demons. With his powerful spiritual fatherhood, incredible love for his spiritual children, and content intercession, the church can be renewed as a light to the nations. 
So you might be wondering, what is exactly consecration to St. Joseph? It basically means that you acknowledge St. Joseph as your spiritual father, and you, you want to be like him. And St. Joseph, in turn, will give those consecrated to him his loving attention, protection, and guidance. There are several ways to be consecrated to St. Joseph. As your parish priest, Father Dominic, has said, one would be a 33-day preparation of going into this. The second would be look, looking into the wonders of our spiritual father. And part three would be prayers to St. Joseph. Now, the thing is, we have heard the litany to our Blessed Virgin Mary. We heard the litany of Lady of Fatima. I wonder how many of you have heard the litany to St. Joseph. Have we heard? Has any one of you heard the litany to St. Joseph? Yes, yes, Father. Yes, Father. Okay, good, Father. good. So this will take about five minutes. I am sure there are still some of us who have not heard this litany. May I invite you all to pray with me this litany of St. Joseph. Can we pray this together? Yes. Okay. May, can one of you take the lead? Can one of you take the lead? Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ hear us. Christ graciously hear us. Hear us. God the Father of heaven. Have, have mercy, mercy on us. us. God the Son, Redeemer of the world. Have mercy, have mercy, mercy on us. us. God the Holy Spirit. Have, have mercy, mercy on us. On us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy, have mercy on, us. on us. Holy Mary, pray, pray, for, us. pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for, pray us. for us. Noble offspring of David, pray, pray, for, pray, us. pray for us. Light of patriarchs, pray, pray, pray for, for us. us. Spouse of the Mother of God, pray, pray, for, pray us. for us. Chaste guardian of the Virgin, pray, pray, for, pray, us. pray for us. us. Foster father of the Son of God, pray, pray, for, pray us. for us. Zealous defender of Christ, pray, pray, for, pray us. for us. Head of the Holy Family, pray, pray, for, us. pray, pray for, us. for us. Joseph most just, pray, pray for, us. for us. Joseph most chaste, pray, pray, pray for, for us. us. Joseph most prudent, pray, 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 pray for, for us. us. Joseph most courageous, Pray, pray for, for us. us. Joseph, most obedient. Pray, pray for, us. for us. Joseph, most faithful. Pray, pray, pray for, for us. us. Mirror of patience. Pray, pray, for, pray us. for us. Lover of poverty. Pray, pray, for, pray us. for us. Model of workmen. Pray for pray us. Pray for us. Glory of domestic life. Pray for, pray us. for us. Guardian of virgins. Pray for pray us. Pray for us. us. Pillar of families, pray for, pray, us. pray for us. Comfort of the afflicted, pray for, pray us. for us. Hope of the sick, pray for, pray us. for us. Patron of the dying, pray, pray, for, pray us. for us. Terror of demons, pray, pray, pray for, for us. us. Protector of the holy church, pray, pray for, us. for us. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, pray, pray for, for us. Lord. Pray for Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. He has made him Lord of his household and reigns over all, 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 all his possessions. Let us pray. O oh God, God, who in your loving, your loving providence, providence Chose the blessed Joseph, Joseph to be the spouse of your most holy mother, granted unjust the favor of having, having him for our intercessor in heaven, heaven, heaven whom, whom on earth he can venerate as our protector. protector. 
Jesus. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. 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 All right. So we have made a prayer. And if you notice the number of titles that has been given to St. Joseph. And very often in our prayers, you notice we are praying to Mother Mary. Always Mother Mary's intra is full. What about St. Joseph's intra? How often do we pray to St. Joseph? Now, I want you to, this is very, very important. When our Heavenly Father sent his son into the world to save us and to make us his children, God chose one person among so many to represent in him on earth. And that person was none other than St. Joseph. God chose St. Joseph as his most tangible image on earth. So when you think about it, St. Joseph is the only man that Jesus called father. Or papa, or appa, or appa. See not. Who else would Jesus have called father on earth? apart from his heavenly father in heaven. But let us be clear, St. Joseph is not God. St. Joseph was chosen to stand in the place of the heavenly father, according to the demands of Jesus' human nature. Joseph carried Jesus first to Egypt, then to Judea, and so he traced the paths of the apostles who preached his name to the Jews and the Gentiles. So when you think about it, what does the Holy Spirit want of us? Perhaps maybe the Holy Spirit wants us to know and love St. Joseph. With the exception of Our Lady's life, the Holy Spirit was more active in the life of St. Joseph than any other saint. If you notice, if you look in scripture, the earthly father of Jesus never did anything without seeking the direction of the Holy Spirit. St. Joseph's docility to the Holy Spirit made it possible for him to communicate with God even while he was asleep. So I told you earlier, the angel came to him when he was asleep and told him, Joseph, do not be afraid to take Mary as your spouse because she has the child to the intercession of the Holy Spirit. So what is this holiness that it is required of us? More specifically, is living in intimate, loving communion with God. Holiness is observing two great commandments of the love of God and neighbor, avoiding sin, leading a life of virtue, and abiding and sanctifying grace. None of this is possible without the Holy Spirit in your life. St. Joseph perhaps will tell you, to have intimacy with God, you have to be submerged in prayer. St. Joseph was not a priest. That is holier than all priests. After Jesus and Mary, St. Joseph is the holiest, most prayerful, and most virtuous person who ever lived. But how did he do it? To prayer, St. Joseph perfected, exercised the virtues of prudence, temperance, justice, and fortitude. Now, St. Saint St. Francis' sales teaches us a very important truth. And this is quite interesting. He beautifully articulated the Trinity of Nazareth, and that is Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. And he said, this represents the heavenly Trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, consisting of only three persons. In other words, Jesus did not have any biological brothers and sisters. And this is what the Catholic Church has been teaching us all along. But as you know, there are other churches who say that Jesus has had other biological brothers and sisters, but the Catholic Church says no. So we must be clear of this. So the pathway to heaven is paved, is paved for us with virtues. And St. Joseph will give you a father's example of holiness. With his holy assistance, 
our transition to heaven perhaps will be an easier one. Membership in the family of Nazareth, accepting Joseph as our father, Mary as our mother, and Jesus as your brother. The thing is, have you ever thought of St. Joseph in a fatherly way? You see, we often say Mother Mary, and we refer to Jesus as our brother, the Messiah. But what about St. Joseph? He was Jesus' father on earth. And if you remember in Luke 2.48, chapter 2, verse 48, when Mary and Joseph lost Jesus for three days, when they finally found him, what did Mary say to Jesus? He said, your father and I have been looking for you. Mary did not say your foster father and I. Mary said, your father and I. Luke chapter 2, verse 48. So if we can call Mary our mother, Jesus our brother, is it wrong to call Jesus our spiritual father? Because Augustine, St. Augustine once preached, though St. Joseph was not the biological father of Jesus, he is nonetheless the real father of Jesus. He exercised fatherhood towards Jesus. He was authoritative towards Jesus. He was affectionate and faithful. And from scripture, we know that St. Joseph watched over and protected Jesus. So the thing is, we've got to ask ourselves, can we accept Jesus, as, can we accept St. Joseph as our spiritual father? But we must also ask ourselves, why did Jesus need St. Joseph as a father? In order for Jesus to grow into the fullness of his manhood, he needed a father, a mother, and time. We have this on the, on the slides. Can we have that, please? But let us remember, the, yes, that's the one. No. Let us remember the apostles spent about three years with Jesus, but Mary and Joseph spent 30 years with Jesus, 30 years. And that is important because Jesus needed to learn certain things from Joseph or from Mary, the maternal mother, an example of his mother. We know Jesus when he's human, he was not a robot. In his human nature, nature he needed a mother to teach him about human life. He needed his mother to teach him how to re relate to women. He needed his mother to teach him about human life. And there's only so much a mother can teach a child, especially a boy. Jesus is male, so he needed a father. And only a father to teach him some important things. Such as how to sacrifice as a man as he witnessed the daily examples his father sacrificed in his workshop. And how to work as a man, honestly, as a carpenter. How to relate to customers, how to charge them, honestly. How to act as a gentleman, how to pray. How to travel to the religious feasts, that St. Joseph had to take him to, and to how to be taken to the synagogue to observe the rites of the Sabbath. Now we can see why Jesus needed St. Joseph as a spiritual father, as his biological father down here in on earth, and Mary as his mother. But the question is, why do we need St. Joseph as a spiritual father? If you already have a biological father who shares our nature and is supposed to take care of us, allow me to provide you the simple answer by asking you a few questions. And that is, first, is your biological father the spouse of the mother of God and the father of Jesus? Of course, our answer is no. Does your biological father have the superlatives of every virtue? No, again. 
He's your biological father, the head of the holy family, the patron of the universal church and the terror of demons. No. So now you know why St. Joseph is so important for us to be our spiritual father. After the Virgin Mary, perhaps demons fear St. Joseph more than any other saint. The devil fears St. Joseph more than he fears the Pope. How is that possible? The Pope is only the vicar of Christ, but he is not the father of Christ as St. Joseph was. So brothers and sisters in Christ, if you notice, we have spoken a lot about St. Joseph. There's, there's plenty more. There's plenty more. So maybe per, perhaps, maybe we can come to another area of sharing if you want to do your sharing. Or can you tell us how has St. Joseph touched you in your life? If you want me to share, I can start off and then I hope, I really hope I can hear your sharings as well. For me, I remember St. Joseph as a kid in Christmas cards. You know, at the stable, the man looking after the mother and the baby. For me, he was a protector, a guardian, a jagger. And even when I saw him on some Christmas cards, he was leading Mary and the baby on a donkey. He walked. He was taking care of them, a jaga again. And I've, I've really come from a poor family. There was 12 of us in our family, siblings, father and mother, 14 of us. We were poor. And when I saw St. Joseph, St. Joseph gave me hope. God was with him. I became brave. Well, I got some more, but I like to hear how has St. Joseph touched you? Can you please share? How has St. Joseph touched you in your life? Mother, there are two questions uh, here at the chat, chat box. Uh, Anthony, and posted by Anthony. Anthony can directly ask if you don't want to ask, maybe Mr. Steven, Steven Chin can post a question to Father. Okay, okay. Uh, there's a question from Anthony, Father. Uh, he asked, the Catholic Church seems a sail from all sides. Yes, God will prevail in the end, but would be nice and motivating to hear how the Church is doing right now. Are we really sliding or is there overall an improvement, albeit some problems to be fixed? What is the Pope's assessment of the state of faith in 2021? Wow, <laughs> a global perspective. Wow. Well, my dear friend, I think this, we can touch ourselves and ask ourselves that question. Ask ourselves first. I think important thing like Anthony de Mello says, the longest journey is from outside to deep into your heart. How much? Do we know Jesus? If today a Hindu or a Muslim comes and tells you, can you tell me something about your Jesus? How much can you tell him about your Jesus to convince him that Jesus is your savior? If you can do that, then I think you've got the answer. How do you see your attendance in your church? How do you see your attendance at BEC meetings? How do you see the youth of today? How do you see attendance at catechism classes? How do you see family prayer? How do you see people venerating the saints? My brothers and sisters in Christ, I think if you read the Herald, the Pope has said today, today it is not the fault of youth. It's the fault of parents who have not catechized the children enough. But of course, there's no excuse for the youth as well. Youth spend three, four years in the universities mugging for the exams. How much do they mug to understand Christ? I know I'm, I'm not answering you directly, but I think I'm helping you to see the overall picture. The Herald comes out with, with international news, local news. It's online now. Have you taken the trouble to read the Herald? 
Do you have spiritual reading? Do you have spiritual reading? So brothers and sisters, I think if you answer these questions seriously, it will give us an answer of the faith life. And if, what is the faith that is growing today? The Muslims. Isn't it true? In fact, when you watch how the Muslims go to the mosque, how well are they dressed? The Hindus, how well are they dressed when they go to the temples? How are we dressed when we go to our churches? Are we on time? Are we late? All this, all this speaks are answers to your questions. So the Eucharist, the, yes. Yes, Father Francis, uh, basically you're saying that um, rather than evaluating outside, self-evaluation is better at this moment. Yes. Are you trying to point this towards that? Yes, I'm helping. I mean, I think to understand this, we have to look at ourselves. We have also look at what is around us, our parish. We have to look at the BECs. We have to look at the world at large. Then we get the answers. Yes. That's also another question. By the same yeah. person. Yeah. Uh, the struggle, the current struggle, according to person. No. Uh, first is fear. Yeah. Uh, second is COVID nineteen. Yeah. Third is lost of jobs. Yes. Fourth fear or struggle is not able to adapt to new normal. Okay. Fear generally is fear. COVID nineteen. Uh, lost of jobs. <coughs> Uh, not able to adapt to new normal. Okay. Uh, so these are the things that how to link with okay. the I don't know. <laughs> very good, very good. This is a very good question. I think it affects many of us all over the world, all over the board. I mean, I have these problems also in my parish. But the thing is, the thing is, I don't have the answers for this. But I think what is, I think let us refer back to Jesus. If you remember the time when Jesus was his disciples on the boat and Jesus was asleep at the stern and the waves were rocking him, rocking him left and right. And the disciples were so frightened and they said, Lord, Lord, aren't you afraid that we, aren't you afraid that we are going to sing? What did Jesus do? He woke up and he calmed the sea and the wind. And what was the question he posed? To the disciples where is your faith where is your faith brothers and sisters to answer that i feel today fear yes fear we all have it even i like i've mentioned earlier this is one of my, my weaknesses as well feeling left alone and different aspects of fear now the thing is for me what is the opposite of fear for me the opposite of fear is faith why? Simply because fear, you can feel it. Your heart, your, your heart palpates. You know, you sweat. You're frightened. You can feel it within yourself. But faith is something that we get in baptism. And through the sacraments, to receiving of the Eucharist, to be in touch with God, faith is something that you grow within yourself. You have to grow it. Faith is your own. We can ask God for help. Lord, help me in your faith. Okay. So the thing is, faith and fear. We are, we are having fear. Yes, true enough. Everybody has that. But how do you overcome this faith with God in our hands? I mean, the COVID, yes, we have, we, we have been told how to protect ourselves. We have been told to stay at home. Jobs, I don't know, because many people are losing their job. Many. I don't have an answer to myself. I mean, even we as the church are being affected. <laughs> so the thing is, all I have for you, the answer is, my dear brother and sisters, is pray. Pray for faith. Do what we can and, and look at others. Look at those who are less, who are who are who are worse off than us. If you look at ourselves, it doesn't help at all. Look at those who are homeless in care. There are a lot of people who are homeless. Even in Cotabaru, there are people who are homeless. No food. 
If you have got a home, a roof over your head, you are blessed. If you've got three meals a day, you are blessed. If you still got your job, you are blessed. If you're still got a family, no one affected by COVID, you are blessed. Let us look positive. Let us look at the blessings God gives us. You cannot get rid of the fear. The fear will always be there. But it's up to us to think about positively or negatively. And that's the only thing I can tell you. I don't have another, another answer for you. Does that answer your question, my dear brother or sister? Mr. Anthony, if you're around, you may post a question. Uh, one of the things of St. Joseph, I was looking at the internet and he's saying the prayer of St. Joseph. He says, uh, St. Joseph is a powerful intercessor. Pray for us. Uh, so, so maybe the fear and other things that is mentioned by Anthony, maybe you can ask St. Joseph to intercede for you. Uh, he's a powerful intercessor. Okay. Anyone of you have any question, you may post to Father Francis. He's around. He can answer and can assist us. Uh, Father, Noella here. Yes, Noella. I'd like to just share something. Okay. Um, for me, um, really, I'm really not um, actually dependent or never really um, fell back on Father on uh, St. Joseph. Okay, so something new also today to learn more about him. Um, of course, we know St. Joseph is, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, you see, I can't get the word now. You know, when we teach catechism and all this, uh, the foster father of Jesus, but like Father Shed, he is the true father who journeyed with Jesus on earth, right? So um, one thing I would like to just share was uh, during my time when um, I went to France for the final profession of one of our known sisters, huh, Sister Jessica. When I was there in this place, La Tour, uh, there was this church of St. Joseph where the profession was held. Okay, and it was something so nice because uh, a saint I could relate to, huh? St. Joseph. And uh, the sisters there said that uh, the, the church there was named after him because he was known to be the provider. So they live on providence there. The, the nuns, the little sisters of the poor, live by providence of uh, charity from people. So they named the church after St. Joseph. I learned that from him. And so I learned that he was the provider. And uh, secondly, something touched me was the story of the staircase of the chapel of Loreto in, San, uh, in uh, Mexico. Uh, when I read that story, it gave me goosebumps because uh, the sisters there prayed uh, the novena to St. Joseph to get a staircase to go to the loft, to the choir. They didn't have, and uh, there was this man who came and said that after the novena, when they said the novena, uh, that he will build this staircase. Uh, of course, he had conditions. No one must see him doing it and all this. And they believed that it was St. Joseph because the man disappeared after that without getting any payment at all. And the staircase is still there. It's like a museum, I think, today, that chapel. Uh, so maybe you can go and Google those who do not know that story. So when I was reading that, it really gave me goosebumps knowing that how powerful St. Joseph was. So uh, just to share, I just wanted to share the story. Thank you, Father. Welcome, welcome. Any other questions? There's another question by Juliana. And she said, Father Francis mentioned about the family. How can spouses and family stay together if they are separated by distances and the ban on traveling interstate and interdistrict for months? Okay. Uh, I, in fact, I have often spoken to couples about this, especially when they come for marriage huh? and when they have to be living a, 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 a at in di di different places. I always tell them, if circumstances prevents you from living together, uh, you can't help it, you can't help it. But you can be united in prayer. I tell them this. I said, if you can say a rosary, you can tell your husband at nine o'clock, I'll be saying the rosary 
in your place where you are at nine o'clock to pray the rosary. Today, of course, you know, with modern technology, you can be praying together. Yes, physically we can't be together. That's the circumstances. But we can be united in prayer. You can be united to the modern forms of technology. I know it's difficult, it's difficult, but this is where you need. Satan loves it, to divide people. But how do you still stay connected? And that depends on you. See now, stay connected in the Eucharist. Offer, offer your spouse to the Lord. Offer his safety. Offer his good health. Offer his job, offer him. That is staying together. That, I mean, that is one thing I can think of. I hope that brings some consolation to you, Juliana. Hello? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, of course, you can ask the police to give you a permit to travel back home. Also possible. If you are within Malaysia, I think they are very... Uh, if you ask, I think they will be very kind also. Huh? So just try, try again, try again. It's possible to come back home, I think. Uh, any more questions? There is a comment. There is a comment from uh, uh, Galaxy S9 Plus. Um, as a retired medic who have family members as frontliners, working in hospitals and dealing with COVID patients and living apart from them, I'm dealing with all sorts. Without faith, we'll always be living in fear. Thankful that there is God and faith. He's sharing. Lah. Thank you. Yes, that's good to see you with your faith. You need that. You need that. All of us need that in this time. Thank you for that comment. Thank you. Another, there is another statue of, you know, the sleeping St. Joseph statue. Yes. Are you aware of it? Uh, so... Do you like to say something about it, Father? Oh, Father, this? since you have it in your hand, you say something about it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when I was in Philippines, you know, when I was in Philippines, I think Pope, he came for uh, a gathering, a gathering of, uh, to meet the church in Philippines. I mean, the people of Philippines, you know. He was there and he introduced this particular statue, the Sleeping St. Joseph statue. Okay, and he said, you no, know, all his problem, whatever he cannot solve, you will put under the statue, this statue, at the head of St. Joseph, and let it be. And normally, according to him, and uh, most of the problem solved on its own, according to him, no? That's what he said. And he became very famous after that. After that, you can find this statue everywhere. Uh, people are selling and all that. So it's promotion for Daughter St. Paul. And uh, if you like to get a this particular kind of statue, you can buy it from Daughter St. Paul. I think they can uh, order for you. So you just contact, look at the directory and contact them and get one for yourself. Or uh, see your parish priest, maybe he may be able to get one for you. Okay, so I have one. So far, I've written one particular petition and put it down. Uh, sure enough, I think it is solved on its own. Uh, I don't know. So I'm not trying anymore so at the moment. Uh, but anyway, but do okay. it with faith. Okay? It's so, you, so you can see Father Dominic, as he's bigger than me, he's got a big statue. I've also got a small statue. Ah, the sleeping statue. So, I mean, yeah, you can get it. It's quite famous today, you know. But I don't have any requests under it, you know, because... <laughs> Anyway, so, but, I mean, that's what the Pope said, all. it's true. Yeah, that this is what the Pope said, really. And so this is how the statue has become famous. Now, can I have the two, uh, if the, no more questions, the two pictures of St. Joseph. Remember, you all are being shown to you all, the two pictures of St. Joseph. Can you put that on the screen? Ah, okay. Now, the thing is, very often, very often, when we see St. Joseph being portrayed in statues and what, what not, he's often portrayed as an old man, isn't it? But was, is he really an old man? Or is he a young man? 
So there are doubts about it. Now the thing is, the Catholic Church has no formal official teaching on the age of Saint Joseph. You are free to believe whether he was an old man or a young man. Now, if you think about the physical demands of his mission, the probability of him being an old man is practically zero. And if you remember at the uh, litany that we are praying, look at the responsibilities that St. Joseph has. Tremendous. Oh, there is, if you uh, there was this uh, nun, Mother Angelica. In 1981, she founded the Eternal World Television Network, EWTN. It is still on, it's, it's still on. And her network is extremely successful uh, in the Catholic media apostolate. But sad to say, Mother Angelica died in the year 2016. But this Eternal World Television Network still exists and continues to lead many people to Jesus Christ and the Catholic Church. And the story goes, Mother Teresa, sorry, Mother Angelica loved St. Joseph. On one occasion during a live telecast, a caller asked her a question about St. Joseph. The question went something like this. Mother Angelica, do you think St. Joseph was old or young? Mother Angelica answered her with a classical wit responding, well, my dear, that's a good question. There's no official church teaching on whether young or old. But I prefer, she said, St. Joseph as a young man. All I know is that old men don't walk to Egypt. St. Joseph was required to walk a lot to support the Holy Family. But an old man wouldn't be able to walk from Nazareth to Bethlehem because that Bethlehem is nearly about 80 miles from Nazareth. And the journey would have been across rough terrain. For those of you who have been on a pilgrimage to the Holy Land, and even till today you will know the desert, the terrain is rough, sandy, rocky, and it's not safe, especially today. And after St. Joseph was instructed by an angel to take the child and his mother to Egypt, this required St. Joseph to take his family to another long journey. So the thing is, do you think St. Joseph would have been an old man? He would have died halfway he was a, if he was an old man. And imagine you mothers, if you're choosing a husband for your daughter, a young beautiful daughter, would you choose an old man? Now, God wanted someone to be the father of his earthly bound son and the spouse of the mother. You think God would have chosen an old man? Definitely not. So I felt these and many other reasons and imagined an old man taking beautiful Mary and child into Egypt. Egypt is not a safe country. Or how many days they would have had to walk. They didn't have a Honda. They had a donkey. And a donkey could only carry Mary and Jesus. Where would they have they had stayed along the way? Joseph was a poor man. So, and also to protect Mary and Jesus, Joseph had to be strong. So when you think about it, perhaps the answer is there for yourself. Yes, statues have been shown as St. Joseph as an old man. Perhaps in the early days, it was for the old people to preserve the virginity of Mary. So they put an old man. But when you think about it, if St. Joseph was young, and even as priests today, would they choose an old man as a priest? No, because he has got nothing to offer up. St. Joseph had his chastity to offer up in his love for Mary, in his love for this child Jesus. So as a young man, this young couple was burst, bursting with love for this child 
and for love of God. They had that to offer up to God. So perhaps that will answer your question. Whether St. Joseph was a young man or an old man. Thank you, Father. There's a question for you, Father. Yes. Okay. Uh, Go ahead. There's a question. Okay, there's a, one comment and one question, actually. A comment yeah. from uh, <laughs> every, to everyone. I was so lost in my life when I was younger, age 10 to 14. However, by the grace of God, Jesus Christ, I was saved and becoming so much better. Very grateful for my faith and for God. Please continue to pray for me. Thank you, uh, David, for the sharing. Uh, Let's give one... David a clap. Let's give David a clap. I think that's beautiful in his sharing for his there's change. Also, yeah. There's also one question from uh, Des and Sarah uh, to, to Father. Uh, Father, as a single mom, I look up to St. Joseph as a model. However, what is Father's advice to cope with the pain and struggle to raise a child single-handedly? Okay, good question, a very good question. If you look, generally you find St. Joseph is out of the picture. And he is supposed, supposedly said to have died early. There were two reasons I think I can think of it. One is perhaps maybe because when Jesus went about preaching, he always spoke about God as his father. Imagine if St. Joseph was there, they'll say, hey, your father is there. What are you talking about, the heavenly father? And as it is, people were walking away from him because he was claiming to be the son of God. So that's one of the things. But St. Joseph having died as a single mother, imagine Mary. Imagine Mary. She was living alone, taking care of this young Jesus. Not easy, you know? Not easy. I don't know how she would have coped. I don't know who was supporting her. Maybe the disciples, perhaps. The friends of Jesus, her friends. It would have been difficult. So as a single mother, I would ask you to ask Mary, Mother, I'm helpless. Mother, I'm afraid. Mother, I'm weak. Mother, I'm poor. Ask Mary. Ask Mary to help you. Just as St. Joseph is an intercessor, Mary is closest to Jesus. And if you remember, even when Jesus said he was not ready, Mary told the servants, do whatever he tells you. The wedding at Cana. And as I was telling you earlier, perhaps St. Joseph's in tray is empty. Send him a petition. I know, I know. I don't know your pain. Honestly, I don't know your pain as being a single mother, but I know it must be difficult. I guess it must be really, really difficult. Ask Mary, ask Joseph to guide you, to give you the strength, to give you the courage, to give you the faith, to give you the faith. Because I believe in life, there's always hurdles to cross. Be a light for Jesus. Be a light for other single mothers. The many single mothers, many. Be a light for them. Show them that with your faith, you can still carry on. That you have Jesus in your life. You have Mary to guide you. You have St. Joseph to protect you. Be a lady of faith. Be a lady of light. Be a lady of courage. I know as easily as I can say, but a lot depends on how we ask God to guide us to give us courage to help us in our daily journeys. Uh, Father, Father, there's a, a question which came through WhatsApp uh, to you. Uh, is there a part, any part in the Bible about St. Joseph's death? No, there isn't. Not that I know of. I'm not a Bible scholar, but I don't know of anything that said. That's why it doesn't tell us whether St. Joseph was young or old. Okay, thank you for Sorry. that. Welcome, welcome. You have to ask a Bible scholar about that. <laughs> Any other questions? I, I really, I really thank you all for your testimonies. I thank you all for sharing. Uh, it's very good. It's very good because it helps me. 
It helps me to see where we are today. We're all struggling. Yes, we are all struggling. For those of you who have not shared, don't worry. Don't worry. Uh, we are all in the same boat. Uh, as much as your companies are suffering, families are suffering, parishes are suffering, the migrant workers are suffering. And it is so easy to point at fingers to our leaders. We are becoming to hate them. But what did Jesus tell us? Love your enemies. Pray for those who hurt you. Pray for them. Pray for them. Let us pray for our leaders that, they, that God will touch them. You and I cannot change them. No. But God can. God can. So let us pray fervently. I don't have enemies. Fantastic. Oh my gosh. I have to make a statue of you. <laughs> Saint Alfonso. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Tell me again. A, there, there, there is a comment, but there, there's a comment yes. from um, Christina. Uh, yeah. She says that she lost her dad at six year old. Uh, she, okay. can, she can't relate to a father figure. But now that she is going through the 33 days consecration to Saint Joseph, she is okay. now taking St. Joseph as her, free, her spiritual father to help her build a stronger relationship with the tri Trinitarian God and Mother. Very so good. She's able to call St. Joseph Papa Joe. <laughs> Fantastic. Very good. Very good. Very good. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. That's true. There's always answers. When we, You see, the thing is today, the problem I find we're having is too much of noise. Too much of noise. We need to find God in the quiet. We need to find God in the quiet. Spend some time in the quiet and asking the Lord, Lord, speak to me. We're always speaking to God with our prayers, you know, talking, talking, talking. But are we listening to God? So perhaps maybe we got to change. Like when you change your habits, your, your character changes. You notice it now. Change your bad habits, you become a better person. So maybe we can try spending maybe about 10 minutes every day in front of the altar of you got a chance to visit the Blessed Sacrament, spend 10 minutes, ask the Lord, Lord, I'm here, speak to me. It's amazing when the Lord touches you, how things change. Father Dominic will remember this, when we were in the final year of our seminary, final year, he was intending to pursue, and I said, Father Dominic, I'm scared. I want one more year. And he was brave enough, he went on to be ordained a deacon, but I held back. In prayer and in silence, I gained back the composure and the faith to move on in my spiritual life to become a priest. Father Dominic will tell you that. This was in Thailand. Remember, Father Dominic? Uh, yes, Father, I remember. Yeah, okay. That was a long time ago, yes. 15 years ago. Still fresh in our minds. The brave so, man. Father Francis and myself, we are classmates. Yes. We started with four. And um, one have left. And three of us became priests. Uh, one has become a CDD father. Uh, so he's serving in Canada. And uh, Father, my, Father Francis and myself in the Diocese of Penang. Father Dominic, okay. perhaps to let you know, yeah. Father Thomas's. Yeah, Mother yeah. just passed away. So passed away, we yes. pray for Sola. Uh. Father Thomas Law, he's from Balikulao in Penang. Yeah, his father and his sister lives there, but his mother just passed away, I think today. And, um, and, and my dear brothers and sisters, don't forget tomorrow is the feast day of your parish priest, Father Dominic. Wow. So we will brother. also pray <laughs> for him. So let us pray for him. Let us pray very specially for him. We ask the Lord to bless him with wisdom. Ask the Lord to bless him with courage. Ask the Lord to bless him with knowledge. Ask the Lord to bless him in his ministry. Ask the Lord to help him in the building. Ask the Lord to help him to be a man of God. Ask the Lord to help him in his temptations. Ask the Lord to help him in all the good work he's doing and the lives of the people he has touched. We ask the Lord, ask Mother Mary, as he's in the parish of the Mother Mary itself. We ask the Lord to bless him very specially as he celebrates his feast day tomorrow. We say one Hail Mary for him. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. 
Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. God bless you, Father Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Father, Father there's, a, there's a question. Uh, Mrs. and Jennifer would like to ask a question. Can you please unmute yourself? Okay. Uh, Father, earlier on, uh, you did mention about... Uh, Mary telling Jesus, uh, is, uh, when, when Jesus was lost at the age of 12 at the temple, yeah. you said that uh, she didn't say, look, your foster father and I were looking for you, but you say, uh, your father and I were looking for you. But yes. then, uh, and then later, Jesus will be saying, don't you know I must be in my father's house? So how do yes. you reconcile that? Looks like Jesus does not acknowledge him as the true father, but he is saying that, you know, don't you know I must be in my father's house? How do you reconcile that? Okay, you see, Mary was earthly. Joseph was earthly. Yeah? Jesus was growing up. Jesus was both divine and human. But Jesus, Jesus, he was always following the the, the direction where his father had called him. But for us to remember, importantly, what did Mary tell him? That is why as an earthly person, now I'm telling you of how we can accept Joseph as the father, because even Mary, Mary who was the mother of Jesus said, this is your father. But Jesus was looking at it from another point of view. He was referring to his earthly, and that is true also, the earthly father. So to reconcile that, okay, Mary is saying something in the context of his human nature. Jesus is answering it in the context of his divine nature. It's two, it's two different responses. How to reconcile the divine, but Jesus, to, to reconcile it is Jesus was both human and divine. Isn't it? Jesus is both human and divine. I'm sorry, I don't know. Does that answer your question? Uh, okay, acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, brother. There's a comment from uh, Usha. Uh, she says, uh, to know more about St. Joseph, please read the book of Joseph by Jose Rodriguez. Very informative and we'll answer more about St. Joseph's life. Uh, she just got this book today and looking forward to know more of his life. Father Don Calloway's book, Consecrated to Joseph, helps to be consecrated to St. Joseph. So yeah, two books which she recommended. Yes, it's true, it's true. I think to know about a saint, uh, there are many, many books written, especially know about Jesus. There's millions of books written. All the books in the world, all the libraries in the world cannot accommodate the life of Jesus. So the thing is, I think if you really believe in Jesus, you really believe in the saint we are talking about today, St. Joseph, we got to read. Malaysia, our country, today people are becoming a non-reading culture. I remember many years ago, Mahathir, our former prime minister said it. We are not a reading culture today. So we need to get back into it. Spiritual reading. Personally, I do spiritual reading about half an hour every day, and I find it helps me. Take that. You can start off with 10 minutes. Take a book on spiritual reading. I tell you, it is so beautiful. You are allowing God to speak to you through that book. That is one way to improve, to, to grow in your faith. Keep in touch. Keep in touch. Keep in touch. You like Chondo? Take one spoon at a time. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you for that. Any more questions or any comments? If okay, not, we have. Yeah. I promise. I promise you all an hour. We have gone an hour and a half. <laughs> so uh, so. we we like to thank uh, Father Francis Andrew for being with us today and uh, giving us this wonderful session which have uh, given us a new perspective on how we should look at uh, St. Joseph. Uh, I would like to invite Father Dom maybe to say a few words. So, <clears throat> thank you, Father. Thank you for your wonderful sharing. Uh, 
uh, and also taking some questions and answering for us. Uh, thank you. Uh, we wish you all, all the best in your ministry, even though you are far away at Kelantan. <laughs> the whole state belongs to you. <laughs> You're like a bishop of that particular state. Uh, so we are with you uh, in press. And of course, we can call each other. We can talk to Father. Huh? And uh, thank you so much, Father, for your time. And, so Father uh, Dominic, thank you very much for inviting me. It is with your permission that I was able to address your parishioners. Thank you very much. Uh, so God bless you too and your parish. And all the beautiful people who have been speaking oh, yeah. and listening to today. Yes, Father, maybe you can uh, say a prayer, concluding prayer, and bless us. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for the gift of faith. We can you thank you for the gift of persons. We thank you for the gift of our earthly father, St. Joseph, Mother, Mother Mary, our brother Jesus. Lord, we thank you for inviting us, for choosing us, because Lord, you said, we did not choose you, but you chose us. So we thank you, Lord, for choosing us. Lord, we ask you to continue to help us during our turbulent times, to be people of faith, to be people of hope, to be people of love, and above all, to people who want to know you, to love you, and to serve you. We ask this to Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and glorify the Lord through your lives. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night, Thank you so much. Good night. 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 Good